Hello everybody and uh, welcome to a brief introductory video into Side 3. Side 3 finally released um, about a month ago I think it was, started to ship and uh, I've received mine, a uh, production version of course, having used uh, a pre-production cartridge for development for best part of a year now I think, uh, on and off. Um, I'm really happy with the way it looks. Um, a few teething problems uh, with card compatibility but we seem to have sorted those out and uh, yes yeah, so uh, a very nice little piece of kit this it's got gold plated contacts the production version and a green LED uh, that you can use to illuminate your house uh, at Halloween to give it that kind of uh, eerie ghostly uh, feel just put the computer near to the window and it will illuminate uh, actually out into the street uh, if you have the green LED switched on, so that's a, an extra bonus feature. Um, but enough preamble, so what I want to do is uh, just go over to the desk here uh, with a computer and show you basically what it can do. Alright, so here we have side three, all finalised in its uh, attractive shell with a rather nice logo. Um, gold plated contacts on the bottom there. Uh, the shell is a very nice fit, it has to be said, unless you're trying to slide it into a 1200XL, but we won't talk about that. And it really does look very nice indeed. Now, uh, I've got two of these actually. The other one was the pre-production cartridge, which is this one here, and Lothara kindly sent me a second shell. Um, and I had to replace the um, SD connector on this board. Uh, it was one of the problems I was having during development is that the uh, SD connector on this uh, pre-production board it uh, never worked very well uh, when hot swapping a card. We weren't really sure what the reason for that was, uh, whether it was just part of the design that I'd have to try and debounce the um, the card sensor. But if we take this one out of here, I've since replaced this SD card connector because once I had the production card, it wasn't really a problem if uh, this one got broken, but I did manage to replace the SD connector and now, it's got a nice clicky feel about it and it works perfectly well so uh, it was the connector all along and when I took the old connector off there was just a bit of gunge or flux or something inside that was just enough to stop the spring clip from properly actuating so now I've got two of these this one's got different colored LEDs on it but it's nice to have a backup anyway so I'll let you have a, a closer look at this uh, cartridge here so you can have a look, look from the side. It's very, very nice. It's it's one of the more attractive shells, I think. And it looks really modern, in my opinion, anyway. I think it looks really good. So this is the side three cartridge, but the question is, what can you do with it? Now, of course, I'm trying to write a manual. I've tried to keep the user interface consistent in the loader. Um, but of course, this does do different uh, extra things, more features. So to demonstrate the cartridge, I'm going to obviously need some SD cards, uh, which were kindly sent in by a side three owner who was having terrible problems. Neither of these cards worked for their owner. When he posted them to me, the Transcend one did work fine for me, uh, but the Panasonic one didn't, so there was clearly uh, a problem. So uh, I released an update to the loader, uh, which had a small change to the uh, chip select logic uh, when doing general I.O. on the card. and. Uh, the Panasonic card uh, began to work and apparently uh, all of the other cards uh, in the possession of uh, the owner of these cards uh, now work without problems. Alright, so assuming you're using uh, Side 3 standalone with no Ultimate 1 megabyte, this 600XL, uh, it does actually have Ultimate 1 megabyte in it, but everything's turned off. So this is essentially a, a stock machine with a RAM upgrade, a generic RAM upgrade. Uh, we'll put the switch in the lower position. We'll test Spartados X first, which is built into the cartridge. So we'll turn the machine on. And we're going to boot straight into Spartados X with the side 3 driver. And we've got access to our hard disk via said side 3 driver. Uh, we can swap cards as well if we want to. That's no problem at all. I don't think I've formatted this one yet, so we can oh, go ahead and format that. Drive 3, build, yes, yes. There we go, so we've got a fresh partition there. Let me swap them back over. And there we go, so everything's working very nicely. We can set the date and the time. I think uh, that one's set to yesterday's date, unfortunately. 
Um, but we'll uh, just to uh, illustrate the point, we've, uh, we've got the time, which is correct. Yes, absolutely correct. So um, we can start the loader as well from the uh, Sparta DOS X prompt just by typing car. And we should see the side 3 loader straight away. So this is the side 3 loader. If you're familiar with the side loader, or my, my side loader at least, you'll be right at home. A few things have changed here. A few things have improved. Uh, first of all, uh, the big difference is that we now have uh, ROM files and CAR files are displayed in the menu, which did not used to be the case with side 2 and side uh, because, of course, this cartridge is capable of mounting cartridge ROMs with different banking schemes and such like. And another thing is that this um, loader, because it's got access to a 2 megabytes of uh, RAM, SRAM, actually right on the cartridge, uh, is capable of reading FAT directories containing a thousand files, which is hope I'm hoping is enough for everybody, uh, without having to read them in separate chunks of 250 files. Uh, if you try and use the older side loader uh, with um, very large directories, you'll notice that it loads in 250 files, sorts them into order, and then offers you a little ellipsis where you can uh, you can select more files and load the next chunk and such. That works okay, but it's it's not ideal. There's one of these folders here has got a colossal number of files in it. Uh, one of them should have oh, what's a popular starting letter for. The games, what we got here, 256, 512, there we go, there's a lot, 684 files, read in the twinkling of an eye. Now to navigate through these enormously long lists of files, uh, you can use the keyboard or you can use the joystick. Now with the keyboard, if you press Control and Shift and the up or down arrow, you go up or down by a screen full of names. Now if you press that and let it repeat, it speeds up. So you can get through this enormous list of file names very, very, very quickly indeed, uh, which is very useful. Now if you plug a joystick in, you can also use that up and down, of course. So down and up, down and up. Uh, but if you hold down the trigger and then press up and down, that replicates the screen up, screen down, or page up, page down facility and then you go left and right and that sort of thing. Uh, but so if you're just using a joystick, just hold the button down and pull the joystick down and you'll race through the entire list of files. The scroll bar does jump a bit at the end there. That could be, I think I could do better there. That does, gets to the, the second last page and it does a hell of a jump there, but it's pretty hard to do proportional scroll bars. Uh, we'll improve that then. So you can use the joystick to very quickly navigate through extremely long files and the uh, keyboard of course. Now if you want to go to the very end of the list you just press Ctrl and Z. If you want to go at the start of the list you can press Ctrl and A. E. If you want to back up out of a directory there's a couple of ways to do that. You can go Ctrl and P for parent directory uh, or of course you can use the joystick and cursor up to the uh, parent directory um, icon there. So the top entry is parent and that one is root so that will take us right back to the root directory so let's go back into the s folder like so or you can just use the escape key and that will continually take you back up the tree so uh, three different ways of uh, backing up out of uh, a folder now of course what we've also got is the search facility so let's see what could we actually search for this is a horrendously dense directory structure. It's a, it's, a, it's a real stress test for searches. You can find another video on this channel comparing search facilities of loaders, uh, which is quite funny in places. Um, but let's uh, let's just assume that we want to find I'll just find out something I can actually look for. Small reverse I. So if we're already in uh, the S folder but we don't know where something is, we can just type the name or a bit of it there and that takes you straight to small reverse i and we can hit enter and there we go so there's your uh, xex and we get into small reverse i in very short order here uh, now if we want to get back to the loader in a standalone mode what we just have to do is press the button there on the top and hit system reset and we go straight back to the loader now notice that we went back to the uh, directory that we were in before we ran the file 
Uh, and if that's not enough for you, we can even go one step further. And we can, if we go into the options here, we've got several options here for uh, remembering where you were before you did something. So we can remember the folder that you were in, or we can even remember the item uh, that you actually last ran, or we can just remember the partition. So if you've got multiple fat partitions, it'll always open uh, the last accessed partition. Uh, that can't be turned off, there's no reason to disable that at all. Um, so if we select item here, so let's go into carriages and let's uh, let's run beam rider. Just hit enter there, so that's a cartridge, which is hit enter on the car file. And there's beam rider, now we're going to press the button there because we want to get back out. Press reset. And there we are, we're still uh, highlighting the Beam Rider file, so you can remember not only the folder you're in, but the actual file that you selected. Now going forward, what I want to actually add to this is the ability to tag, say, this file for example, as an auto-run file. So when you actually power the system on, rather than going into the loader, uh, it'll just run Beam Rider straight away without any input from you whatsoever. Uh, that is actually quite a complex undertaking because of the memory requirements of the loader. I'm going to have to do all sorts of clever stuff to get that to work, but never mind. Uh, that's what I want to do. Uh, of course, you would have some sort of um, hotkey to bypass that. And then when you subsequently call the loader, it would actually call the loader rather than um, mounting a cartridge again because it's already mounted. Now, if we look here, um, we'll just turn that back to uh, folder because I don't really need to be taken back to the uh, exact item that I used. Now, what we've got there is a standard 16K cartridge. So when I hit enter on that uh, cartridge entry there, that's our cartridge, that's our cartridge type. Now cartridge uh, type, car files rather, which have a header which describes what kind of cartridge banking scheme is used, uh, have uh, empirical uh, or canonical, if you like, numbering scheme. Uh, so this happens to be type 2. Uh, if we go back out of here and we go into let's say OSS cartridges, so you've got your action, basic, XE and such, uh, we've got various different banking schemes here. Now we can mount a cartridge without immediately restarting the machine as well. Uh, and that has always been the case. You could always do that with disk images uh, if you had ultimate one megabyte. If just by holding the, the control key down and pressing enter, it loads the cartridge but doesn't restart. Now if we go back into the media or the mounts menu here as I call it, now we can see we've got a cartridge of type 3 which is OSS. Uh, 034M 16K. And now if I press Ctrl R to reboot the machine, we should boot straight into action. Which we do. And we can press the button and hit reset and go back to the start. Now we do have some limited uh, ATR support with side 3 without ultimate one megabyte. This kind of thing, this kind of approach using a soft loaded OS uh, in RAM of the computer is not terribly compatible, but it does work in some cases. You can boot DOS 2.5, so here I've got DOS 2.5, um, mounted it on drive 1. I could have just pressed enter there, but you can see it's mounted. And this is no ultimate 1 megabyte involved here. If I press Ctrl now to reboot, it does indeed boot DOS 2.5. And there we go, we call a directory there. You can't write to it at the moment because the whole thing is actually being run from uh, the whole image. Uh, the disk image is in the RAM on the cartridge. Um, it could easily be changed so that you could write to the image in RAM, but your changes would be lost. You'd need to have some way to dump the image back to um, the uh, SD card. Now, back to cartridges. Let's unmount uh, that disk image. Uh, by the way, if you want to unmount the cartridge, uh, you can just hit enter like that. Or, there's an option here, uh, unmount carts. Now, this, this option, this just uh, applies to when you come back into the loader from your mounted cartridge, or wherever you were, uh, with the button or uh, using the L key if you've got ultimate one megabyte. What this wants to know is, do you want me to unmount the cartridge that is mounted? Or do you want me to ask you whether you want to unmount the cartridge when you try to run an XEX or an ATR? 
uh, or do you want me to never unmount the cartridge so you would have to go and manually unmount a cartridge uh, to prevent it getting in the way of other things you were doing so you've got three options there never always and ask so let's test that out as well so let's mount a cartridge and you will random stuff now this brings me to another point here these are ROM files there's no description of um, the banking scheme uh, this is just a, a raw dump of a cartridge so the loader doesn't know what to do with it really it doesn't it can only go by the size of the cartridge so what it does is it looks at the size of the image compares it against the list of cartridges that it does support and just gives you some uh, suggestions for what it could actually be now this could be a little bit more complex than it is but that would require scanning of the image to look for various references to banking schemes and whatnot all takes time so what it does at the moment is it presents you with a list of all the cartridge types which are the same size as that one and allows you to choose between them now and commonly the first uh, option is uh, generally the one you want uh, so if we mount that standard 16k and that one does work so we uh, we guessed right on that one so anyway that's still mounted so we've got that cartridge mounted so let's say we want to go and run a uh, XEX so we'll go in here I uh, will run yump so we can just type YOO see what it finds oh there's yump so we want to run that but yump's gonna have a problem because there's still a cartridge mounted here so what it does is asks you do you want to unmount the cartridge yes or no and in this case yes I do so if we hit enter then yump runs no problem at all so that cartridge is now gone from memory it's not there anymore uh, until you remount it there we go no problem at all uh, let's go back into the loader so that's how you uh, manage your cartridges and as you've seen in prior videos it uh, supports a wide range of uh, types we've got uh, Ace of Aces which is a 128k XEGS cartridge and you can go let's see that works let's try Space Harrier Space Harrier is a, a one megabyte uh, now where's that one gonna be it's there run that one so we just hit enter and it automatically knows what kind it is and there we go Space Harrier don't have time to play Space Harrier though we've got to get through the features of this cartridge and I'll be, oh by god I'd be playing it right now I've even got the joystick here but we've got no time so so that pretty much gives you your standalone uh, usage okay so that standalone operation uh, of side 3 broadly covered and I've decided to split this video into two parts uh, for no other reason than the fact that I'm a complete bastard um, but no I think it's probably wise it makes sense to have the second half covering uh, ultimate one megabyte usage um, pretty similar to the older um, loader videos I've done before if you haven't seen them already for side 2 uh, I think they date from uh, late summer last year August I think last year 2019 uh, you can find videos on how to use the side loader I'm off now because the entirety of uh, Western Europe is now run by absolute despots who've completely lost their minds. I'm going to just wander up the road and throw myself off some high cliffs. But uh, not to worry, I'll be back next week um, to finish with part two of this uh, little two-parter. Uh, and I'll show you uh, how to use uh, side three uh, to best effect. Uh, with uh, ultimate one megabyte uh, when you've flashed the uh, little plug-in and the PBI BIOS that sets it up for side 3 so I hope you enjoyed that one and if you want to know more about side 3 uh, check out my website I'll put the links in uh, the description underneath the video and uh, I look forward to showing you all the other things you can do uh, in conjunction with ultimate one megabyte in the next video so uh, thank you very very much for watching and I will see you next time Bye-bye for now.